Find the domain and range of the relation graph to the right. Well, this relation is represented by this blue curve. This blue curve has an arrow at one end and another arrow at the other end. And we have this black dotted line, which represents an asymptote. Well, this asymptote isn't part of the curve. What it represents is that as this curve is... <clears throat> it represents that four values it represents that for it represents that as these It represents that as this relation extends beyond the bottom of our graph, the y-coordinates approach infinity, but the x-coordinates approach the value x equals 1. What this means is the x value x equals 1 is not a valid input for this equation, but that all the x values that are greater than x equals 1 are. In other words, if we input x values, that are just a little bit larger than x equals 1 will get very large negative y values, but we can't input the value x equals 1 itself. That's just not permitted for this relation. Well, let's go about finding the domain. So the domain is the set of all possible inputs for this relation, or another way of saying that is all possible x values. The way we find the domain is that we project this curve onto the x-axis. Well, let's consider this arrow first. This arrow indicates that this curve continues this behavior of heading in, in this direction beyond the confines of our graph, which indicates that all the x values that extend beyond this graph are valid inputs for this relation. In other words, all the values of x greater than x equals 5 are valid inputs and would produce valid outputs when substituted into the relation. The way we can indicate this is to draw an arrow like this on this side of our, our number line that we'll construct in a moment, which indicates that the set of valid x values for this equation continues beyond this graph and approaches x equals infinity. Also, for values that are greater than x equals 1, uh, that are along this line, if we were to take a, a random value, let's say x equals three and draw a dotted line above and below, we can see that there clearly is an intersection with this curve, indicating that if we input x equals three, we do get a valid output. This means that our projection of this curve onto the x-axis will look like this, and we'll cover values that are greater than x equals one. The question we have to consider is whether x equals one is a valid input. Well, as I discussed before, x equals one is not a valid input here. All the values of x that are even slightly greater than x equals 1 are valid inputs for this equation, but this asymptote represents that x equals 1 is not a valid input. It's not a possible input. Consequently, we represent this on our line segment by drawing a hole here. So a point with a hole, which indicates that this point is not a part of our segment. Also, we can quickly confirm that any x values that are less than x equals 1 are not valid inputs. Let's choose one, an arbitrary value. Let's choose, say, x equals minus 3. If we draw a dotted line above and below the value x equals minus 3, we do not get an intersection with this curve. 
Consequently, it's not a valid input because if we input it into the relation, the relation wouldn't yield a y value. So we can write this domain as x is greater than one. Notice that we didn't write greater than or equal to because x equals one is not a part of the domain. Let's consider the range. The range is the set of all possible outputs for this relation or another way of saying that is all possible y values. Well, if we were to draw dotted lines to the left and right of any one of these values shown on the y-axis on our graph, that dotted line would intersect with the curve. Let's choose an arbitrary value, y equals four. So if we draw a dotted line through y equals four to the left and right, we see we do get an intersection with the curve. That means that there is an x value that we could input into this relation which would yield y equals four as a valid output. Because this is true for all the values specified here on this y-axis, all these points are part of the range. So if we were to project this blue curve on the y-axis, we'd get a line that looks like this, that indicates that all these points are part of the range, they're all valid output values. Also, we'd get an arrow up here and an arrow down here, because these two arrows on the curve indicate that this curve continues, continues its behavior of heading up and heading down all the way as y approaches infinity and y approaches minus infinity. Another way of writing this is that the range consists of all real y values. Again, if we read this y-axis as the number line, this line segment, says that the range is all real y values. And we're done.